original ask, will you be so kind? Will you say and spell your full name if you don't mind? And uh, full official title if you don't mind. Uh, Amida Roller, E-M-I-D-A, Amida Roller, R-O-L-L-E-R, -L -L -E Roller. I'm the Executive Director of Dane Arts, Mural Arts. You are the perfect person to talk to. So talk to me a little bit, you probably got a phone call last week, I would imagine, from the city and they said, when can you be here? I don't even know, how did that <laughs> conversation come up? Yeah, I got a call from Karen Wolf at the Madison Arts Commission and she was looking for artists, um, artists of color. It was a, supposed to be some kind of uh, pro-black uh, art to um, enhance State Street, to beautify State Street. And I came in as, not as date arts, mural arts. Um, I came in as a mom with my kids last week and we painted um, second and third block of State Street. Um, today I'm here at Dane Arts Mural Arts. Uh, the team painted this yesterday at our shop and um, we're gluing now. So it's painted on a fabric called Polytap. Um, this is the fabric we take into the schools to work with youth all through Dane County. Uh, so we take the mural to them rather than have them come to the wall. So we paint on this fabric and then we install. So that's what we've done here. We painted last night, um, yesterday afternoon and last night and cut out the piece and painted the background this morning and now we just glued it on. We have some words going, going to go on here and we have respect, empower, inspire. That's exactly how it should be. And I understand, you know, along with this story, we're trying to get the message out that you really need to be part of, you need to be asked to do this or you need to go through the proper channels, right? Yes, I mean, yes. it's not just an artist yeah. free we were, com we were commissioned to do this. This was commissioned by the owner of this, the building here to put these two. So this was, we didn't choose to put these um, images up. This was requested, so yes. Wonderful. And you know, a lot of people are wondering, where will this art go after this? It gives me goosebumps. I've heard maybe in Madison schools mm -hmm. putting them up. What have you heard? What would you like to see? Um, I've seen many people try to work out some kind of plan where they can, um, they would take photos and maybe do some kind of exhibition later. Um, but some people want to take the actual pieces and um, store them and um, make sure that they are not destroyed and use them again in some other, some other way. I'm not sure what that way is going to be, but this one, I hope, because it's a lot of... Um, Thank you rephrase that because I want to make sure I get your phone right now. Okay. And so this one was commissioned and um, we put a lot of work into this and I hope that this won't be tossed out and uh, we can either cut it out or um, move the board as is and it ends up somewhere, a school, business, someplace, but it will be up to the um, owner of the building who commissioned this to decide where she wants to put it. What does your heart say about a project of this? I mean, it looks like an art gallery. It is. I mean, the first time I came through State Street, I think it was like Monday or something. It looked like a deserted town and boarded up and it looked really um, very unattractive. But now um, art has beautified and brightened the space. So it's really, really exciting to be a part of that. But even in beautifying State Street, there's still a message. So it's not just about beautifying, um, it's still sending this message that, you know, what's going on, that black lives do matter. Um, and what's going on right now really shouldn't be and we should change, something needs to be changed. Um, so whether you like the way the message is put out there or not, something has to be done. And what a beautiful and peaceful way to do this. This, I would imagine, a, labor, a true labor of love for you, right? To put this it's on. It's been fun. You have probably not slept between you and your family <laughs> and everything trying to uh, put together this project. Because I know with, with your art, I mean, you typically have months to plan. Mm -hmm. This is days to come up I with know. something. I know, yeah. So it's been a great experience, I think, for my, my family and for the artists we, I work with to do this. I mean, we put this together quickly and it's up. <laughs> it's so excited to... Um, do a quick turnaround. I'll use, yeah, it takes months to plan and put, do big mural projects, but this we whipped it up in less than two days. It's, it's amazing that you've been able to whip something up like this, um, and you've, you've done it like in, in the hottest of weather, right? I mean, so 
was that at all a concern? You know, you're, I would imagine a lot of this paint, you know, it's it's hard to maybe work with a canvas when it's so hot outside. Yeah. Too. While we were painting, it was really neat. People walked around with water and snacks and coffee, cold coffee. So uh, we were well hydrated. So it's very nice. And then some of the um, businesses fed us and it was really, it was wonderful. We were well received, I'll say. So. I think it has been indeed. Oh my I goodness. Guess. Is this your daughter? Yes, here? my youngest daughter. What do you yeah. think? I mean, I want to ask her this question too, but you know, how important is it that, that she's really getting to see all of this? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, um, it's, it helps deal with all that's going on. Um, it's hit my kids really hard. Um, but I think by painting and being a part of sending the message in a different way, um, I think it's helping them deal with this. I think it is too. Oh my yeah. gosh, I got a little change. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, I mean, there's many different things that can be done about it. It's just a matter of what's gonna be more beneficial for everybody and not just for a single, a single party, you know? Fine State Street, we are also sending the same message. Um, Madison Arts Commission contacted us and said, you know, we would like to see some pro-black art on State Street where we can still send the message but beautify the State Street um, that we so love. So, uh, Karin Wolf <laughs> um, asked to uh, see if we could get some artists together and come keep here, looking, looking. come here and beautify State Street. So we're really, um, we really appreciate all the work put together and quick turnaround to get people to um, beautify this space and um, still send the message. Talk to me a little bit about that message. Do you feel like it's being heard loud and clear? Well, it, it is really that. Black lives do matter, and what's going on? <laughs> that's getting drowned out, and that's I'm so important. Sorry. How that being that's such a like a part of State Street. How many interviews? And action, So the message, obviously, here is that Black lives do matter, and that we need to do something about what's going on. Um, we just haven't come up with a solution. We just keep revisiting this. Uh, we look forward to a solution where you don't have to be worried about walking down the street and being arrested or um, uh, targeted because of the color of the skin. Where would you, you know, that's, that's question everyone, you know, because there's been talk of putting it in schools, doing bigger things with it. What, what do you want to see for the future of all of this artwork so that it lives on? It would be neat to see it. Um, preserved somehow, either by taking high resolution photographs of them and exhibiting them later, or actually preserving the actual pieces somewhere where they can be viewed as a group. That's where it so it could end up in the schools, it could end up in businesses, it could be, I'm sure some good plan to come with this, right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, it's going to be just beautiful no matter where it goes, yeah. and that, that important beautiful message that needs to be really felt for sure. You've worked, you guys have worked tirelessly over the last week. Are you exhausted? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but how are you coping right now? It's, it, I don't, I, I, yeah, I mean, it was hot and we were supplied with liquids and you know, coffee, water, snacks, so it, I don't think we're thinking about how hot it is. We're just, we're just happy to be here to do, doing something. I came with my family, my kids helped me out. Today I'm here as Dane Arts Mural Arts helping um, uh, paint the portrait over there. So yeah, so I've shown up as mom and I've shown up as executive director. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see me smiling and laughing under my mask, but this is too great. This is perfect. All right, let me get some more Lysol out. We're going to change the mic and everything one more time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for doing this. I know this is ridiculous, but... It's like roasting. I know. Yeah, I should have right been offering you guys water during all of this, okay. too. Thank make, sure, you. make sure I didn't turn it off. By nope, it's, to it's totally happy as a clam. So, okay. all right, so give this a second to air dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're all set with the nice so, so if you don't mind, clip it on the top of your shirt, and then we'll just try to hide this cord behind you as best as we can. That's beautiful. And then we're going to hide this cord away from your body. Yeah, that's perfect. You can hide it over there or behind. Whatever way works for you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have to go in here. Yeah, we're working. Okay.
Oh, okay. yeah. 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 No, get back on that habit. I have nowhere else to put stuff that's for his to put. I just thought of that peanut. I love this. I have the meeting of the artist minds here. This is great. Yes. Everyone's helping putting this together. Okay, hardest question. Will you um, say and say and spell your full name, uh, full official title, just like everybody's kind of been coming to you? Karen Wolf, Madison Arts Program Administrator. K A R I N, last name Wolf. W I mean, I feel like everything I've done has brought me to this moment. It, it's a very challenging project, and I just keep telling myself, I've got this, I can do this. This is what I've been doing my whole career. Absolutely. But, yeah. Hang on for one second. I want to make sure we get all of your videos yep. sound like. Micromanaging arts administrator to let go of control a little bit and just, you know, ride with the waves of the times. That's what you're, that you're doing at Indeed. Tell me a little bit about how many are now girls um, across the, the downtown how many murals How many, there are? Yeah, I guess that would be early. Sure. Well, so how the process worked is we started with the bid and Tiffany working with the property owners and getting permission to do the murals, and then I was working with the artists and commissioning them. So I think we started with more and more have signed on. So just yesterday we were placing 31 artists. Keep looking straight. Oh, 31 no, artists okay. at, at new, uh, in new locations. Overture is, uh, is on board today, and we've got a lot of artists working there. Um, and so it's just a constantly evolving process. So I don't even have a final count. I would say we have worked with about 30 different artists at this point. Incredible news. And it's something that sounds like it's just going to continue on. You mentioned Overture. This is not a, a week-long project. It sounds like you guys are going to continue to see this grow. Yes, I think I think it will, it will continue until it doesn't. And, um, you know, we'll see how this unfolds. Would you like to see it all go? Keep looking there. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. And what was the question? Where would you like to see it all go at the end of the day? Because, you know, at some point, right. you know, we think that things will get back to a, a status where we want to have the businesses unboarded up at that point. Where would you like to see it all go? Well, I, I want to hear the, what, what the artists want to see happen. I mean, nobody really has ownership of this. meant to be, you know, precious and up in a gallery. We want to be part of the dialogue, and that it could be erased over tomorrow, you know. But obviously, what, what has been created is so important to this history of this moment that we are hoping to find ways to preserve it. We're hoping the property owners, you know, work with the State Historical Society or the Contemporary Museums to showcase some of the pieces that came out of this time. It is definitely part of our history here in Madison. It is, and that's why, you know, and I asked those kind of questions because I know the school district, there's people that have said, hey, let's put these in the school. There have been so many wonderful ideas that have been emerging, and the artists are so busy working that I haven't had a chance to check in with them, and I really think these are the voices that we wanted to amplify, and we wanted to really center black voices and people of color and allies, and so we really need to check in with them and see what is their vision. They did this to us. They did this for our community. They transformed our community at a moment of intense pain, and they uh, were able to explain the rage and the pain in a way that people were not understanding in other ways, and that is critical. So we owe that to them to hear what they want to have see, what they want to see happen with their work. Beautiful answers. Talk to me a little bit about why you want to go through the city. Why, why you need to not just come out here with a paintbrush and start painting. Well, <laughs> you know. Um, there are, when, when people mark on walls without permission, they often get ticketed, sometimes they get arrested. Um, that's e considered illegal graffiti. I work for the city, so I can't do a project where I just say, go wild, go tag everybody's property. You know, I can only do what I have permission to do, and there are certain parameters that I work under. And I'll tell you, this project, a lot of that opened up and there was more room for expression and there was more room to let the artist create, which I always say, trust the artist. I believe in artists and I believe in art, and I'm, I hope this project demonstrates how much we can trust artists. They're the creatives, they think out of the box, we're in the box, let's turn over the world to artists instead of, you know, armor and guns and see what we could have, 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 have happen. Well, and it sounds like what we've had happen is just this beautiful art gallery that's now up on stage. It's the, probably the best reaction. Yes, right? and I'm glad you're saying beautiful, but I hope you also see it's not just about beauty. It's not just about whitewashing the important messages. 
There are serious messages here. Go look at what Rob Dees have to say. Go look at, like, why would someone put a portrait of Obama and Michelle right now? These are beautiful, but there, there's something that is being said here, and we need to read the visual images and, and listen to these voices. Absolutely, what they allude to. Yes, what they allude to, what's being expressed. You know, I mean, you can come down, you can look for the beauty, and certainly you will see the hope of people coming together and changing their society. But, you know, just take a moment, stand in front of a piece, think about, you know, what is being communicated to me, and why is it being communicated to me, and what is happening in this moment. It's a great way to educate yourself and to learn about uh, all kinds of issues. There's a lot of opinions here. There are, there are people that, you know, that weren't invited to paint, that did make graffiti, and, and they didn't even know they were doing that, and we weren't, you know, overly controlling. We were letting things go. But then there, are, then you'll see other messages that are really, you know, a gut punch. And we, as a culture, need to be able to take a little punch in the gulp, gut and wake up right now. That's what we're being invited to do, and I think that's what these artists are giving us a, a an entry point, a way to do that. And then, if you are playing, if you do want to still contribute, you still need to write, go through the city because there are certain things like I would imagine profanity and, and those things are things that you just you yes know, there are parameters we would like tarps to be placed down we would like pedestrians to be able to keep social distance we the only guidelines we don't want commercial messages there was a volunteer painter who wrote something and it was a very clever phrase and i won't repeat it but it was an advertisement for the business inside this is not the time to advertise and this is not really the time yet for healing you can't heal until you've eradicated you know the cancer of racism and when we get done to that then we'll move on to healing and you'll get you know, lots of love, but right now, let's change this world. Let's change our community. What wonderful answers. I'm trying to think if I've forgotten to ask you any. Very, very ironically and fortunately, you know, there's a freeze on spending at the city right now because we're, you know, we've been, we are still in a global pandemic and it's been very costly to the taxpayers. But a few weeks ago, knowing how um, not only a third of, uh, of, of people are out of work right now, but artists are even disproportionately out of work and they're really suffering economically. I would say it's closer to 90, 95 percent. And these are people who aren't going to be able to pay their rent and, and feed their families. So the city recognizing the urgency of that situation and, and seeing that there just aren't the proper uh, social networks in force to, you know, it, for a crisis like this, they were able to authorize me to spend up to $80,000 on sort of a Works Progress Administration type project where artists sign up, they say they've lost income due to uh, due COVID-19, and then I'm able to assign them small projects. That just went through before George Floyd's murder. And so that was in place so that I could jump into action and had a mechanism to pay for artists. So we are trying to hire artists who fall in that category so that we can also help you know, get them some income that they need to offset what we're going through. Amazing, but we still need possibly donations too, and so. And, and that, does that go to you? Yeah, I think that so would go to me. So maybe we switch that up for yeah. Art takes time and art takes money. And so we're trying to figure out what comes next. We had that great resource that Karn and the city had put together, and we're trying to figure out what comes uh, next for us for fundraising. We think we're gonna put a call out to do a little bit of support to our artists. And how we do that and where we distribute it, we're still in progress. This is a working project, we keep moving forward. But what we found is that we have 80 requests for art that came through the Business Improvement District. Those are the businesses that officially asked there are other businesses who have friends or community members who either the artists showed up and volunteered or they reached out to. 80 is the number that Karin and I can keep track of. The others are a little bit wild westy, but we appreciate all of the importance of all those messages and we want to get money in the hands of all of those working artists. So more to come on that story. For now, we really want to encourage people to come down and learn about the messages our artists are putting out, to spend some time to reflect on what they're saying and to see our businesses because they're here to heal with you. You can still get a coffee, but otherwise we encourage you to just spend your time looking at the art. Right, we understand right, between 85 to 90 percent of the businesses right now are closed and it, it's this to, to honor and preserve all of, all of the, the, the messages that are, that are here um, and at the same time also try to, try to get it across that yeah, we want we want to, to be visualizing and seeing the hurt and the pain as much as possible. Absolutely. So you're correct. There's about 85 to 90% of the businesses on State Street that are not open. 
they're not in a position to do so right now, whether that's because of their damage uh, physically or emotionally. You know, we have a lot. We have a lot of we have a lot of small business owners. We have a lot of people who put their lives energy into these businesses. And what they are doing right now as a collective, we've just decided to pause in downtown, give space for our artists, give space for our community, give space for healing. And then you're gonna see them this weekend, you know? They're gonna think about taking down some of the boards maybe. Or maybe they think about moving a board to a different location so they can open their window but still have their messages across. Because these messages are truly reflective of the whole community. And we appreciate the way the artists have been able to translate that for us. That was going to be my next question. How soon might some of these businesses be wanting to, you know, put windows back in and things like that? So as early as this weekend, so if you want to come down and see the art and all the exhibits being put up, really, this is the week to come out to State Street and take your family and do it, right? I think it's the week to come down, but I'm also inspired by the art that we see, and I'm looking forward to the evolution of the art. We might see more pieces up next week that you've never seen before. We're talking about ways that maybe we can preserve it um, through, like we were talking about digital transfers, so maybe they, they maintain some spots downtown. Maybe we open up some of the glass, but we put the uh, displays inside because then people can get the light inside their shops, but they can still showcase the work. So there's a lot of opportunities still to see this work. And as you've talked about, or we've all talked about, we have some plans. We'll figure them out to preserve it for long-term history, historical reasons. Perfect. How much? You know, oh, beast. It's okay. Like, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's you got to be thinking yourself. You know, I mean, this is this is beyond a passion project for you. I mean, it's it's, it's costing quite a good bit to, to be able to do what you're doing, right? Yeah, I actually. Uh, I, you know, when I first started, I had uh, times of like just literally spending my rent money on paint, but I just enjoy painting so much. And then I usually don't put wording on my work, but I think this was the perfect opportunity for me to, to try to relay a message that I was familiar with, you know? So, I, again, I don't do wording on my work, but it's just the perfect opportunity to, to do something new and uh, spread the message. Right. Seven dollars. I'm, I'm going to say you probably spent maybe hundreds, if not more than a thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean sometimes uh, you know, piece it's like ten, twenty cans depending on the piece. But it's it's again it's not about money. It's about the the beautifying something and then spreading the message through the same words, you know, all in one. So I'm not. Uh, that's my way of like helping out or reaching out to the community and saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm in the same position as well. This is a labor of love, right? Your mom was talking yeah, about it. You, know, you guys have been out here nonstop. Talk to me a little bit about why you felt so compelled to do all this. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's been a lot going on in Madison with the protests and the justified outrage about the murder of George Floyd and countless other innocent black lives. Um, and it was really sad to about a week ago to drive or walk down State Street and just see everything boarded up. It was very eerie. Um, but we got a call about um, doing some art on the boards, and since a week ago, we have been doing that. So um, for me, it's been a really like cathartic way to deal with everything that's going on, and I'm glad that I'm able to like share this with everyone who walks by. Absolutely, it's, it, it, it's really um, you know this is what it's saying. It's respect. It's inclusion. It's empowering. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also I would imagine been kind of exhausting too to just kind of. Being, it's raw, right? I mean, yes. you're, just, you're feeling these emotions and you're trying to cope and you're probably trying to keep your mom's spirits up and you're trying to lift your spirits and yeah. everything. So it is. I think cathartic is really the word for it. I haven't really put that word out to you know, but that's exactly what it is. Yeah. How are you coping? How's your heart coping? Gosh, it's, it's been really difficult, to be honest. Um, and especially with being on social media, I think it's um, hard to find a balance between wanting to stay informed about everything that's going on, because things are developing so quickly, but also needing a break from scrolling down my timeline and seeing black people being killed all the time. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that I can do art, and I still feel that I'm contributing to something. So. I think that's how all of these artists here feel. Um, you know, there, there's talk about what to do with these in the future. Um, you know, would you like to see these go to some big art gallery? Would you like to see them in the Madison schools? What would you like to see? 
I just, I just hope that they end up somewhere where people will still see them and they can still be valued. I think the Madison schools would be a great option. I know Dane Arts Mural Arts, which is the organization that has done this mural, um, does a lot of work in Dane County schools. So they have a lot of murals in Dane County schools already, but I would love to see these in the schools. I think it would be great for um, you know, elementary schoolers, middle schoolers, high schoolers to see this too on a day to day basis. It's the hardest question, I promise, because I forgot to ask you. Can you say and spell your full name? Yeah, Zaria Roller, Z A R I A R O L L E R. Sorry, and how old are you? I'm 17. 17, so you are a junior or senior? I'm actually a freshman in college. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. You are a rock star. Where are you, where are you at for college? Then? I go to Williams College in Massachusetts. Girl, wow. <laughs> yeah. And are you studying art there too? I'm so. not. I, I don't really consider myself like the artist of the family, <laughs> but, but um, I, it's, it's great to still be able to do this. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And this is bringing you, well, it clearly runs in the family. So. Yes. <laughs> what are you studying then there? What are you hoping to study? I'm studying economics and American studies. Thank you. Well, more power to you. I'm Thank so you. Proud.